Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is just going to be just a quick kind of Black Desert Online introduction, basically, uh, basically just a beginner's guide. Things that you need to do or things that you want to focus on when you actually start the game. All right, so basically the first thing that you're going to want to do after you go through the character creation after you go through and spend 20 to 30 minutes making sure you like what your character looks like the very first thing that you want to do is you're going to want to go to escape you're going to want to go to edit ui now the main things that i do is i go in and i actually turn off the action combo guide because as you level up more combos are going to show up here that you can do and it basically just gives you like the recommended moves that you have which are normally like the newest moves that you have and the best moves and it, it, it just gets in the way like you really don't need to see that the skill cooldown window is also optional um, I mean it'll just show you when your actual skills are on cooldown which that can take up a lot of space as well once you get higher and you start using a lot of moves uh, but basically once you actually uh, take these off you're gonna want to hit save enter and then pick what you want to save it to um, now the second thing you're going to want to do is also going to be in this menu and it's going to be under settings. Um, now normally under settings the first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to auto frame optimizer and most of us are going to turn it up so that it has a target FPS of 60. Because um, I mean we're playing on PC. Everybody wants it to be at 60 frames per second. Um, the next thing that you're going to want to do and the, again this is just optional but this is my recommendation is the FOV, the vision range take that up as high as it'll go just because the game itself looks better at a higher FOV. All right, once that's done, you're gonna wanna hit either confirm or apply, and then next you're going to want to go into game settings. Now, under game settings, personally, I've chosen always hide name so that I don't get like four or five bars above my person's head telling me like my family name, my character name, the guild name, like I, I don't need to see all that while I'm running around. Uh, the next thing you're going to want to do is very important, and it's system notifications. System notifications are literally going to be like this bar that's going to pop up right here in the middle of your screen. And when you first start the game, none of these are ticked, and you're going to literally be seeing everything, everything that happens. So basically, the only ones that I have unticked are going to be combat safe zone, which just lets you know when you go into a combat area or a safe zone. Ability up, which is going to let you know when one of your abilities increases by leveling up or usage. Guild quest, which is going to let you know if somebody you know starts a guild quest or if you actually make progress towards a guild quest. And nearby monster, which is going to show you basically an alert on the screen if you happen to get close to a very strong monster. Um, all the rest of them you can mess with if you want to. It all depends on what you want to see, but I don't like seeing like a hundred messages every couple seconds. Um, again, you're gonna wanna apply confirm after this, and that's gonna be all that we're going to do under the actual menu. Um, next thing you're gonna wanna do is gonna have to do with the chat. Um, the chat itself, if you hit it in the UI, that's perfectly fine. You won't view chat whatsoever, but if you wanna have chat up so that you can see certain messages, you're gonna wanna click on the cog, and you're going to want to uncheck the things that you don't want to see. And basically all I've left up is team messages, guild, party, and whisper. So that basically I'm only going to see things that are, that are utterly important. I took off all system messages and things like that because if you leave system, world, and notice, and general on, then literally your chat's just going to continue scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and it's never going to stop. You're, you're going to miss PMs, you're going to miss all messages that people try to send you or anything that could be of importance. So again, once you pick and choose what you want to have here, just hit confirm. All right. Um, now as far as what you want to focus on, once you get through the basic tutorial in the game of basically just doing the quest and going through and getting to the next city, what I recommend is pressing escape or pressing O and going to quests and then clicking on the main tab. Now the main tab is going to show you the main story missions that you need to focus on. Now I literally only focused on these missions. I'm already level 50. I still have three quests left in the one through 50 bracket. Um, that's probably from the increased experience from being in one of the extra experience servers. But I would only focus on these quests in the beginning just so you're not completely overwhelmed by all the quests that you're going to come by, all of them that you see in the world, because you can always go back to those quests later on. 
Um, another good thing about this quest menu is if you use multiple screens or if you don't have your game taking up the entire screen, you can click the sticker UI and you can separate this from the game so that you can put it on a completely different screen so that you can look at it and make sure that you're only accepting the most important quest or that you're only doing the most important quest to the main storyline. All right. Um, next, one of the most important things you need to focus on are going to be under M, the map. Now, this is probably showing you way more information than what you need to see. So let's change this a little bit. Let's only show the nodes and let's go back to the starting area. So this is where you're going to start at. This is the very first town you actually start in is Olvia. And as you can tell, you're going to go through basically just running through the environment. You'll come upon nodes and you'll see people called node managers. Now, the importance of nodes is that, like, let's look at Costa Farm. There's grapes here. So what that means is that if I talk to this guy, the node manager, which you'll see a node manager at every node you come across. If you talk to them, you can go to node management and you can, right here, contribution invest, meaning that you can invest contribution points into this node. When you invest contribution points into a node, it's essentially like you're contributing to it so you kind of have slight ownership over it. Now, when we go back to the map, you can tell that these nodes are connected. Now, what that means is I've spent contribution points at all of these nodes. And so it's connected them going all the way across, all the way over here to the next town, all the way to the next town after that. Now. The importance of getting nodes is that the nodes that you get allow you to put workers at those nodes. Like as you can tell, see the little symbol here? I have workers gathering corn at this node. Now the nodes that you need to prioritize in the beginning, it's gonna be farms. It's gonna be places where you can get corn. It's going to be places where you can get potatoes, uh, wheat. Uh, those are going to be the ones that you want to prioritize first. You want to make sure that all of those nodes that you see in this area, you actually get connected um, so that you can put workers at those nodes. Now, once you've used your contribution points to unlock the nodes and connect them, then you're going to get to one of these towns, which I recommend waiting to do this until you get to Heidel. Um, when you actually get to Heidel, let me see. Let's actually run our happy butts over to Heidel so that I can actually show you where you get workers. All right, so when you get to Heidel, what you wanna do is you're gonna need to look into buying housing because each town that you go to has a place where you can get workers from. Like that's where we're auto running to now is Joel because he's going to allow us to get workers. Each town that you get to has a limited number of workers that you can put in that town. So the first thing that I recommend doing after you connect the nodes and you get to where you want workers and you want to put people to work is you need to go to Heidel and then this row of houses right here at the top, uh, eight one through, I believe it's like eight four. You want to actually click on these, make sure that you have lodging selected. And then I'll show you on this one. Like you'll have lodging and then you'll go to actual purchase. Where's a purchasable one? Let me find 9-1. Yeah, there you go. You'll click lodging. Maybe not. Where's that? There we go. All right. You'll make sure you have lodging selected, and then it should say purchase lodging. And it'll tell you how many contribution points it cost, how many contribution points you have, how long it's going to take for it to finish, um, and so forth and so on. So it says uh, purchase lodging. You click on it. Now, purchasing lodging allows you to put more workers in that town. So basically, I bought all of these and made all of them lodging so that I'd be able to have more workers in Heidel. Now, now that I have more workers in Heidel, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make your way over to Joel, who we're running towards now. <coughs> So basically this is gonna be like the outskirts of town. One of the main people that you come to town to talk to first, Lara is right there and that's the tavern. So right past the tavern, down here at the bottom of the town near the river, beside the storage area is going to be Joel. Now, talking to Joel requires you to use these, energy. 
Now, you build up energy through doing the story quests, through doing the main missions. Like, doing certain missions allows you to build up the ability to hold more energy. Same thing with contribution points. Now, when you come to Joel, you'll talk to him, and you'll go to Contract Workers. And basically, this is what you're going to do every time you have excess energy. Um, if you're looking to build an empire of workers, that is. So you'll click yes, and there you go. He'll show you a worker. Now, as you can see, this is a giant worker. His color is green. Um, basically, it starts out like gray, green, blue, and then I think the next one above that is going to be like uh, orange. But basically, there's two levels above blue. What you want to be looking for in the beginning is you just want to get a few workers. You're not going to have a lot of energy. You're not going to have enough to sit here and continue going through to just pile on workers and workers and workers. Um, what you should look for in the beginning is any green worker that's a human or an imp. You should take those. Any of those, you should take those. So let's, uh, let's go through this a little bit. Just so you can fill out your worker slots. A goblin, sorry. So humans or goblins, you're going to want to take those at green. Anybody that pops up above green, you want to take them no matter what. Doesn't matter if they're a giant, doesn't, doesn't matter. Just take them. But basically, this is where you're going to buy your workers. If you want to keep going through, you just hit view another and it'll re-roll and show you another worker. Um, but like I said, focus on humans and goblins for greens. Anything for blue. Once you get full workers, then you're going to want to start focusing on colors that are above blue, like artisan and things like that. All right. Now, once you actually have the workers, you know, you've connected your, your nodes, you've bought your lodging, you have your workers, what you're going to want to do now is you go to the map. You're going to click on one of the nodes that you actually have put CP points in, and then you'll click on one of these. When you click on one of the actual farming nodes on a node, you'll again have to invest contribution points over here, but then when nobody's working on it, it'll give you an option of who to send and put working. Um, so this one's actually working at the moment. What do we have? We have flax. All right, so here's flax. We're going to go ahead and do flax. All right, so I have a level one skilled human worker who's doing nothing. So we're going to click on him to send him to work. And what you're going to want to do here is you're going to change it. Because if you press start work now, you're only going to send him out to work one time. And you don't want to do that. You want to make sure that you click change, do maximum amount so that he will continue to do this for 50,000 times. Click OK. You click start work. And literally, that, that's all you do. Now, your workers are out there. They're working. They're actually like bringing in stuff for you to use. Um, in another video, we're going to cover how to make beer. We're going to cover crafting stuff. Um, but another important thing, another important thing that we want to take a look at is your worker list. While you have workers out working, they're going to use stamina. And this bar is going to show you their stamina. Now, <clears throat> as the worker's stamina goes down, you need items so that you can increase that stamina. In the beginning, you're not going to have the necessary items to, to craft beer, which, again, we're going to cover in the next video. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to go to the marketplace, which you, know, you can find any NPC you want by using this button here. And you're going to want to buy beer. Buy like 100 beer or 50, whatever you have the money for. And when you right-click the beer, it'll bring this up. Just every hour, every two hours, I normally do it like every three hours, I'll come here and just click recover all. It'll tell you how many it's going to use. It uses them, recovers their stamina. You're done. You're good. That's all you got to do. Just make sure that you do this every so often because if your workers run out of stamina, they're not going to be doing anything. Um, all right, so the last piece of advice that we have is going to be around the equipment that you need to purchase for your character. You will come across equipment that you'll get from drops, um, you'll get some things from quests, but in the beginning it's going to be best for you to actually go and buy equipment to put on your character, because this equipment is going to last you until you get to 56 and start going to farm bosses and whatnot. Um, basically, weapon-wise, you're going to want to focus on a Kriya, K-R-E-A weapon. Whatever your main weapon is, you need to get Kriya for it. That's going to give you uh, all AP up, which is attack points, which shows your total AP right here. Um, and then it's going to improve your accuracy so that you miss less. Um, as far as armor, you really have two choices, in my opinion. 
Um, and that's going to be the Hercules Might set and the Armor of Heve. Uh, the Hercules Might, if you look at the two set effect, it increases the weight limit when you're wearing two pieces. Um, weight limit can only be increased by wearing this armor, um, buying the actual in-game items with real-world money that allows you to increase your weight, or by letting your character run around um, carrying the heavy pallets that you can get. Um, and they'll basically have to like AFK run to increase the weight, which is something we'll do later on. But basically, I picked to mix the Hercules Might and the Armor of Heve, because the Armor of Heve gives you a max HP increase of 250 for wearing two pieces. So basically I'm getting, basically I'm wearing two Heve and I'm wearing two Hercules Might, so I get an additional 150 weight and I get an additional 250 HP. And this is the armor that I would recommend that you get, depending on whether you want to spend money in the game. Like if you want to spend money to increase your actual weight, then you could just do four pieces of the Heve armor to give you the 300 HP. Um, but ladies and gentlemen, that's pretty much all I got for you. Um, I hope you enjoy the video. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave us a comment or send me a message in Discord. Um, again, I'll do another video later that's going to cover, you know, crafting of the beer, where to get everything to craft the beer, um, and other just general information in crafting. But uh, thank you all for watching the video, and I hope everybody has a great day.